Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast of Shemaine's Model Health for those looking to optimize their long-term health and weight goals and learn about what works best for their body. This is episode 119 and I am very happy to have you back with me this week. And I was just thinking, wow, 119 episodes. Time just keeps going, just keeps flying by and before you know it, it's a year and a half later. Anyway, I digress. So this week we're looking at candida and learning a little bit more about that. But before we go on, I must emphasize that the information in these podcasts should not be taken as medical advice and be taken or used for informational purposes only. Please consult with your medical practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. So moving on with this week's podcast definitely something I've seen several of my clients suffer with but probably a lot more have go about with candida without it being diagnosed so candida or candida albicans is a yeast and it can affect anybody and it comes in a variety of different forms that can be caused by several things you may not have heard of it before, but if it's some but it is definitely something that a lot of people are suffering with, and like I said, many don't even realize it. Most commonly it starts or it grows in your gut. A lot of the symptoms tend to be things that are also caused by certain lifestyle choices and by um some benign illnesses um, and most people wouldn't assume they have this kind of fungus or are not aware that they have a yeast like this but candida grows very easily and there is a lot of ways that you can inadvertently cause an overgrowth of it in your system Um, So the first step to solving this problem is recognizing some symptoms. So here in this week's podcast, we're going to look at a few things that candida sufferers tend to report as symptoms of their condition. So this is just a brief 101 kind of look over candida, some symptoms and how how we may treat it or go about starting to treat it. So first, we look at digestive issues. The most common place that you're likely to have an overgrowth of a fungus or a yeast or a bacteria is in your intestines. And there's a lot of intestinal problems that can cause an overgrowth of candida. If left untreated, it can lead to more serious things like IBS, and Crohn's, um, colorectal cancer unfortunately in some cases and it does play quite a part in autoimmune disease. But because candida is essentially an abundance, um, an overgrowth of bad yeast, it will throw off not only your natural yeast balance but also your bacterial balance because it's like pushing them out of the way it's like hey there's no room for you here so get out so candida kind of takes over your guts um, and your guts of course need both good bacteria and good yeast to function properly. So when you've got candida or yeast overgrowth, you can expect things like constipation and diarrhea or gastric distress. Um, You're also likely to feel a lot of other intestinal discomfort, um, overheating, gas, um, bloating, some people spasms. Um, now these symptoms are common with other problems too. So don't just assume that you have candida um, straight off the bat. 
but it definitely can cause some other issues and it will play a part so a lot of people are not aware that a dysbiosis in your bacteria of your gut or even the yeast there will play a part in anxiety and depression too and I think that's important for people to understand and take on board and really remember a bad gut is going to have a big part in anxiety and depression so next fatigue so we've looked at digestive issues now we're looking at fatigue and I don't just mean feeling a little bit tired in the mornings or the evenings um, fatigue <coughs> excuse me is a symptom of candida when it's more along the lines of chronic fatigue syndrome and this is when you constantly feel tired no matter how many hours of sleep you get or how much you take it easy during the day um, so we all have our days where life can throw you curveballs and you can get down and you're just not feeling yourself and you need to take a day off and take it easy um, but if it's happening over and over again over a period of months weeks months every day it's probably time to start looking into it and again the this can be caused by other things malnutrition malabsorption um, but it's definitely chronic fatigue syndrome um, can have a big connection to candida um, now chronic fatigue syndrome is actually categorized by a minimum of six months of constant fatigue um, you'll probably also experience some other side effects like headaches as well as brain fog um, so ch chronic fatigue syndrome rarely happens for no reason so if you have this alongside some digestive issues there is a good chance that it's being caused by candida so next we so we've covered digestive issues fatigue and next is joint pain this is what happens when the candida fungus finds its way into your bloodstream and starts to spread through your muscles and your bones um, and that is not fun and what I've seen is some people with a severe candida overgrowth and who get regular infections and regular yeast infections, they can fall into the category of fibromyalgia too. So, and this is a two-sided coin. Not only is it the fungus getting into the bloodstream, but it's also the inflammation or the inflammatory response that the body sets about to combat the candida as well. Um, so that's something to bear in mind too. If you've had a lot of yeast infections and your doctor maybe has said that you might have fibromyalgia, you're like, oh, now it makes sense. You can see where they would tie into each other. Um, if it gets untreated for too long we can see um, a correlation with arthritis too so candida can cause arthritis and that's where at the beginning of the podcast I mentioned candida has a connection to autoimmune disease so arthritis being one of those you're most likely to be affected in your hips and knees and your joints can get swollen, stiff and you can generally be tender or sore and just feel sore all over um, and eventually this can result in some bone infections um, and the trouble with this is that it can actually, if left untreated for too long, it's obviously going to be trickier or harder to resolve then so even if you do get your candida under control sometimes you need to look for further support 
to make sure that your joints and your bones and everything else is working well or functioning optimally. Um, so it's best to try and tackle your candida before you find yourself with a must with a much less manageable sort of problem. Um, so if it is candida that you believe you're dealing with, what can you do about it? So here's a few things you can help. And first, we're going to look at your diet. And most people have heard of the candida diet. And there's a lot of great resources out there online and some nice books that you can get. And there's a lot of knowledgeable professionals in this area, too. So don't feel like you're totally lost. So overhauling your diet is definitely the first thing that you want to do because chances are it's your diet that has caused the problem in the first case or in the first place. And we know that bad bacteria and bad yeast and bad fungus, they feed off the crappier foods that we can get into our diet. So to get rid of candida that's already in your system, you really want to look at starving it out. Um, you have to eliminate the foods you're eating that the food that feed this fungus. Um, so I look a lot at this and I teach my clients a lot on this. this is an overall lifestyle practice. We want to starve off the candida, but then we want to come in and kill what's left of it so it can't come back. And then we want to kind of support the proliferation of the good bacteria and the good yeasts so that they fill in all the spaces where that bad fungus was. The good stuff fills in those spaces so that that bad fungus can't come back. And if it even tries to, there is a way higher ratio of good bacteria and good yeast compared to the bad stuff that they just kick it back out again. So what are these foods? Well, most of us know that sugar um, feeds bacteria and feeds yeast. So you probably shouldn't be eating much of this in any way, considering the way um, society is going with illnesses and obesity, we should all be monitoring um, sugar regardless of your weight or your size or your health we should all um, but candida is one of the reasons why um, this also means that you should remove a lot of fruit from your diet a lot of them tend to be higher in sugars and i know there's a lot of people that'll say but it's good sugar and there's fiber and blah 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 Regardless of that, it's still sugar. So um, we definitely want to make smarter choices in the types of fruit that we have. So some fruit is amazing, especially for killing off bad bacteria and bad yeast. But you've got to know what you're looking for. And this is where we look at modbiotics and modbiotic fruits. Um, so... You can eventually reintroduce fruit into your diet once the candida goes away. Um, but chances are candida won't go away for quite a while while you still have a high sugar diet. Um, and there's not much you can do in the line of antibiotics either in this case because candida is a yeast and antibiotics kill bacteria. So you really got to do some sort of overhaul on your diet here and um, with those modbiotic fruits that I teach my clients about we kill off the bad bugs we kill them so it's unlikely that they will come back if we kill them off and then we continue to follow a very good nutritional protocol and it then is just your lifestyle that is your diet that is how you eat um, we also want to monitor starchy foods and starchy vegetables in our diet here. They can also be a big part of the problem. Um, potatoes and beets. 
we want to kind of, when we're doing a killing off phase, we look at eliminating most of them, all of them, if we can. And of course, we don't want to drink alcohol either. Not only is most alcohol high in sugar, but it actually then will inhibit your immune system and your liver. And you're trying to kill off bacteria and then get it out of your body. So alcohol is not a good idea. So you can replace these all of these with cleaner meats better sugars i'm when i say better sugars i mean if you're used to eating candy bars all the time could we maybe look at something um a bit better than that made with real chocolate no added sugars coconut oil stuff like that so homemade chocolate um looking at a lot of healthy fats coconut uh, which is also antibacterial antimicrobial avocado we're looking at a lot of your brassicas to help with the detoxification of the bad bugs also again a lot of those mod biotics foods herbs spices fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut i know pickles are a big thing nowadays um so i have a lot of clients that really like good pickles but you want to make sure you're getting pickles that don't contain um, sugar so read those labels the next we want to look at reducing stress the connection between your gut and your brain cannot be understated you would be silly to think that if your brain and your gut are not directly connected so I mentioned already about um, how the your gut will affect anxiety and depression and we've all had that kind of gut feeling and there is something there to support that it's a real thing that has scientific support a lot of good and bad bacteria in your body obviously forms in your gut or mostly resides in your gut um, and a lot of that bacteria helps to power your brain if your gut is under strain then you're going to have different bacteria ratios form. Um, then your body will focus less on its energy on your brain, which means that you won't be thinking clearly. Now, if you're not thinking clearly and you're not in control of your thoughts, what's going to happen? You will struggle with cravings. You'll struggle to make smarter food choices and get activity, get fresh air, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's one of the reasons why candida can cause brain fog, but it's also why intestinal issues play a part in that depression and anxiety. So you really see there's a vicious cycle going on there. You've got the candida, you've got the um, negative thoughts and feelings happening in your brain, which cause you to maybe eat more sugar and crappy foods, which drives up the candida even more. And then so the cycle continues. Um, and it does work both ways. If you're stressed out, then your body will focus on your brain and survival and not so much as other areas like your gut and your immune system so you're not as resilient or strong you're not healing and repairing properly so there's a lot going on there so in addition to focusing on your diet you want to really be looking at those stress management protocols and especially your self-care now lastly and i do look um, a lot of supplements with my clients. But not everybody takes daily supplements and that's not necessarily a bad thing if your nutrition is awesome. Um, but if you do take supplements, you need to kind of be careful or be aware about which ones you're taking. Because the problem with a lot of supplements is that I, they often have hidden sugars in them or they might be poor quality and this is actually a problem with a lot of food that we might buy in our store too especially those processed foods not to digress but obviously hidden stuff in there too but I mean I get asked a lot I get messages saying do you think I should take a multivitamin should I take a prenatal is this one okay is this one okay and I'm always like 
you know what I, I'm aware of people's financial capabilities but I'm also like that one's crap you'd better you'd be better off not taking any multivitamin than taking that because it's probably making you sicker so uh, supplements is something like you're always looking for quality there definitely and you'll also find that there are ingredients listed that you may not recognize and a lot of these names can be misleading and most of them are actually just sugar so this is where it can be helpful to have someone to tell you um, yes that's good no that's crap so a lot of vitamin supplements especially obviously your multivitamins they'll have added glucose but it'll be listed as something else like dextrose um, and as I said sugar is really a bad thing to be eating if you've got candida and it can sneak its way into your diet in so many different ways including in your supplements um, so do your research and find out what to look out for with supplements. I did a podcast on um, how to navigate your way around a good multivitamin a couple of weeks ago and I also have some infographs in my Facebook biohacking group um, that people can check out and just help them kind of know what to look for and what to avoid when looking at vitamins and multivitamins. So, um, to wrap that up, candida can be sneaky, it can sneak its way into your system without you even realizing it. Um, and because of its nondescript symptoms, it can be hard to nail down what it's actually doing or if it is candida that are causing your symptoms. So, if you think you're suffering with candida keep an eye out for all your symptoms try connect the dots um maybe can answer it shouldn't be too hard to get it under control if you focus on your diet and lifestyle um so i hope you found this podcast very helpful because i know candida and good issues are something many many people are suffering with so this podcast definitely gives the foundations of understanding candida and where you can get started with addressing the problem um thank you for listening remember sharing is caring if you know just one person that may benefit this please do share with them it helps me and us reach the masses a lot more and helps us make those positive changes in our world that we really are desperate to see at this time um so enjoy the rest of your week stay safe and we'll chat next week bye